Hello and welcome to a short Premiere tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at how to use text max masking or color ma masking to allow us to create an effect similar to what you're going to see on screen now. So as you can see we have our video or our text um, masking our layer underneath. So what I've done here is I've just got our edited video or a series of images in this case used a text graphic and had the video or images underneath revealed using our color mat. And I'll show you how to set this up uh, quickly now. So I'm just going to start off with a new project. I'm just going to call this text mask tutorial and press OK. Uh, with this new project created, I'm going to just create some new bins. So I'm going to create one bin for our images. So it's always good to keep everything organized as we work through everything. I'm going to create another bin and I'm going to call this bin sequences. And I want to make sure this bin is not a child of that one. So I'm just going to quickly do that again. There we go. So what I want to do now is I want to find like some images. So I've already found a series of images off the internet. These four here. I'm just going to drag them into my project. And again, this same technique will work with video. I'm just working with images today for speed reasons. Then I'm going to click on my sequence spin, hit the little new button and create a new sequence. And I want to make sure that this is set to digital DSLR 1080p 25 uh, frames per second because I'm just going to be working in a kind of standard HD 1920 resolution. So I'm going to call this sequence text mask tut1 again. So I'm going to give the sequence a name. It's always a good idea to keep everything named in a sort of recognizable naming conventions process. And now I'm just going to start creating my story. So what I'm thinking about here is I'm thinking about the narrative I want to tell. So the narrative I want to tell is that the world is kind of dying. So I have my uh, desert. So I'm just going to scale up, which is now which has then been invaded by human beings who are now uh, starting to harvest it for its resources. which is going to have an adverse effect on the wildlife. So in this case, this poor bee. And with continued exposure, we're going to have a Fallout style world. And again, I'm just doing this using some images and trying to think of a context for this tutorial. But again, this is just my rationale for this order. So this is where I could, would traditionally just edit my video or um, film essentially as I would normally. And I'm not going to go through how to edit a film because there's plenty of tutorials on how to use Premiere for that. I'm just concerning myself with creating our cutout effect. So with my uh, images folder still selected, I'm going to go to new item. I'm going to create a color mat. I'm going to make sure this is the same width and height as my sequence, keeping it at 25 frames a second and making sure it's set to square pixels, which it is. I'm going to hit OK. And this is where I choose my color mat color. So this would be the background for which our cutout would be uh, set as. So I'm just going to choose a aqua color for now because I'm going to show you how to change this in a bit. Keep this as color mat. And I'm going to drag my color mat onto my video layer 2 and make sure it fills the duration of my video. So now I should have a solid color over the top of my images or video. Like so. I'm just going to lock my video layers 1 and 2 and select a video layer 3. And I'm going to drag a text box. And I'm just going to type some smooth text. Like 
So uh, I'm going to make sure I keep my text set to be something that's quite uh, thick. So this kind of uh, masking or cutout doesn't work if your text is script or thin. This really works with very beefy, fat texts, such as this uh, Roboto condensed bold. I'm just going to scale the, all my text up until it sort of fills my window in a way that I'm happy with. And I'm also going to adjust the height level layers. So bring these closer together, like so. And now I'm going to just make my text boxes the size I need to make it and using the align and transform, bring it to my vertical and horizontal center. And I'm just gonna have this be the text for my first image. I'm then going to create another text layer. So I'm going to copy and paste that and I'm going to use my copied graphic as a baseline and I'm just going to change the text. Like so. And again, I'm not going to spend too long on this. I could make this a lot better and think about the context more and match it to some audio, etc. But like I said, I'm doing this for speed. Very uh, emo, by the way, what I'm um, um, creating here. Very uh, depressing. And da -da -da, it's a bit too big. This one's just going to have to be a bit weird. There we go. And then my final one, which will be. Something like this. There we go. So that'll do. So now I have all my text on my color mat. So I'm going to unlock my two layers again. I'm going to select my color mat. I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to search for a track mat key, which is under video effects keying, and drag this track mat key onto my color mat layer. And you'll notice that this has added it to my effect control panel. If you can't see your effect control panel, you can go to Windows, Effect Controls. And using the track mat key down here, I'm going to select the mat to be video free or the layer above it, essentially. And as you can see, we now have that color applied to our text. What I actually want to do though is I'm going to hit the reverse button. So now by hitting this reverse button, we'll have our text be masking and showing our video underneath, or in this case, our images. So this is why you want to put quite a beefy text and you want your text to be quite large so you can see more of your video or photos underneath. Um, and there we go. If I'm not happy with, for example, the color I've used for my color mat, I just go to my project panel, select the color mat object, right click on it, and go to source settings and this brings up our color picker and I can choose a new color and apply it like so. So I can always change the color of my color mat if I want to. Uh, I can still edit my images and uh, video as I would normally so for example I could go to this image here and I can still apply a color effect to it. So let's just give it a uh, monochrome look so let's choose this one so i could still apply effects and filters to my video and images as i would normally let's go with wave warp so i could still apply for something like a wave warp to my filter here and i can then still keyframe what happens uh, to it as I would before. Uh, I can still also keyframe my text. So if I was to select my text, for example, I can still adjust its scale by clicking on the stopwatch once to start our keyframing, moving the timeline along a little bit and then adjusting the value. So as you can see, we can still edit our video as we would normally 
and just to create our task text masking as you can see on screen. So like I said, this has been a very short video and again, this is, um, there's a lot more you can do with it than what I've covered here. I just wanted to kind of cover this fairly quickly because it's a little effect that's quite easy to achieve, but has many applications, um, especially if you're doing a kind of music video work. So I've been Sean Fisher, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.